Hello, everyone that's continuing to join. It's We're waiting. We've got about 200 people signed up, so we're giving everybody ample time to get on. So you haven't missed anything. We will start momentarily. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Jones and I'm here with you today from the March of Dimes and I'm excited to offer you guys this opportunity to learn about our vaccine campaign that we are going to be kicking off. Well, we've actually kind of started, but this is our official kickoff and, and the opportunity to join with many of you who are on the call with us today who are our partners, whether you're a community partner or you might be a grassroots partner, you might be a mom or a family that has joined the March of Dimes. Um, you could be one of our corporate partners. Uh, we're just excited to have everybody in one room so that we can all kind of talk about what's going on in the vaccine world and how it affects March of Dimes and the families that we serve. So we're excited to have everybody here. A few housekeeping. So we've got a couple presenters today, but then we also will leave time at the end for everyone to have an opportunity to ask questions. So if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. We have someone monitoring the chat who will be able to ask those questions openly for everyone to be able to hear. Um, and then answer them the best that we can. If we can't answer something today, we will get back to you, but I don't anticipate there being any curveball questions, I hope, um, that we can't answer, uh, as well as an opportunity for you to um, learn a little bit more about what March of Dimes is going to be doing in the next couple, couple years, couple months um, around vaccines and what's happening in the community. But before we get started, we have a poll for you, an opportunity for us to learn who's here, and how are you connected? All right. Well, thank you for everybody who voted. It's good to see that we've got people from various different places here, some people who have already been doing work some vaccines and people who have just started or just interested in it. So thank you for doing that. It gives us a chance to understand who is with us today and how we're all engaged in this work together. So many of you have joined, have probably worked with the March of Dimes in various ways, but the March of Dimes leads the fight for all health of moms and babies, which is probably what leads us to talking about vaccines, right? So we wanna make sure that our moms and our babies are healthy in, in our communities. And one of the ways to do that is through vaccines. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of a history about the March of Dimes, those of you who don't know, and those of you who do know, this will be a recap in your history lessons. But the reason the March of Dimes is even in existence today is because we worked on eradicating polio. So back in 1938, as many of you might know, FDR was our president and he himself was afflicted with polio and he made it his personal crusade to find an answer to curing pure, uh, polio and making sure that other individuals don't go through what he went through. And so I won't go through the entire time timeline. And those of you who do know me know that I teach a class in, in public health history and I would love to go through the timeline. <laughs> but in the, in, in the interest of time, we won't do that. But I do want to show you just that March of Dimes has been around for 80 plus years. And while we eradicated polio, which was our original intention, we've continued down the pathway of making sure that infants, children, and moms are healthy. And so that brings us right to the last little block there that's in pink that kind of talks about where we are today and where the March of Dimes is in, focused on. And vaccines plays a big piece of that. So if you look at today where we are, we're looking at our goals of ending preventable maternal health risks and death at the same time looking at ending preterm birth and infant death. And how do we do that and how are they connected? 
and making sure that while we're doing this work, we haven't forgotten that we need to look at health equity and we need to close that health equity gap. And along that health equity gap, vaccines have a huge place, right? We wanna make sure that everyone has access to good equitable health, but as well as having good access to vaccines um, in their communities and, and where they are living or where they're working. So all of this is to say that we want healthy moms and strong babies. So we're looking at, you know, March of Dimes is an opportunity to be a convener and a partner. Um, and that's why we've asked all of you to be a part of this stakeholder call to kind of talk with us about the things that you're doing in your communities and your influences, influences and circles that you're working in, how you can partner with the March of Dimes to do similar work and really look at how can we get the message out to families? One of the things that we are most concerned about is what's happening in our country right now is that we are seeing an alarming amount of alarming number of children who aren't fully vaccinated. And some of that's because of what happened with COVID. So some kids are just behind in their vaccines. But in addition to that, in the last 10 years, there's been an alarming trend of parents who aren't necessarily vaccinating their children. And so we really want to address that. So it's a little combination of hesitancy also looking at people who maybe don't want to vaccinate their children, but not because they don't want their kids to be healthy, but because they don't understand or they have questions or they're concerned. And so we want to be there to be able to answer those questions, get them to the right people who can answer them so that they feel confident that what they're doing for their children is the right thing and that their kids can be healthy too. And at the same time, we want to make sure that adults also are having their vaccines um, and are fully vaccinated to the, to the best extent that they can and what's healthy for them. That leads us to our next poll. So poll number two, I am participating today because I am, you have answers there. You were either a member of the March of Dimes National Service Partner Organization, you're the March of Dimes Mission Committee or a board member, you're a partner representing a local corporate or partner organization associated with an entity like an ACOG or an A1 or a health department. You could be a community leader or a member, and then we have a place for other. So if you're not one of those, we still want you here. Excellent, thank you for voting. So it looks like we've got lots of partners representing local and corporate partners. And I am going to hand it over to our next speaker to talk further about that. Right. So thank you, Erin. Um, my name is Jennifer Settlemeyer Johansson and I am an advanced practice nurse and I'm board certified in maternal newborn nursing and neonatal intensive care nursing. So for a long time, um, I have been very involved in the vaccination of women. And CDC data has shown us for a long time um, that there's an alarming gap in vaccination status based on insurance status, um, race and ethnicity, and where someone is above or below the poverty line. And um, the pandemic definitely made this even worse. It, it widened the gap for um, many folks. And um, a study that March of Dimes was a part of showed that 40% of children in America missed their routine vaccines in 2020. So um, that, that routine vaccination rate slipped um, due to the fact that children weren't in school. So there was an ease in um, immunization requirements. There were missed routine pediatric appointments. Um, there were heavy demands on school nurses and health departments. And people all started to really question the validity of vaccines in the media. So nationwide, we're still behind here in 2022. Um, this year, the number of kindergartners with the required shots was behind targeted immunity for broad immunity uh, for diseases like measles, mumps, rubella, um, and pertussis. So we know that we can do better. Um, and also earlier this year, the American Academy of Pediatrics reported that there was, quote, a greater proportion of parents who are questioning routine vaccines and they're looking for reliable and trusted information. Um, so next slide, please. 
And that's really where March of Dimes does come into play. Um, we have long supported, as Aaron mentioned, um, the value of vaccines since the polio soft vaccine. Um, and for years, we have supported work to make sure that moms and babies have access to accurate um, vaccination information and um, resources about where they can um, get vaccinations. So um, we have, throughout the pandemic, had Healthy Moms, Strong Babies webinars, where we've brought on um, people with stories that are relevant to, um, to being able to access vaccinations. We've brought on the actual researchers that have been researching the safety of vaccination, so they can speak directly to consumers. And um, we've tracked this information. So we've really been a convener in organizations that help pregnant people that help um, babies, that help new families. And we are the ones that bring all of those people together under one wheelhouse to give consistent information under all these points of care throughout the continuum of care for both moms and babies. So we're really looking to educate moms on routine vaccine, vaccine recommendations and where they can access vaccinations. We're looking to um, tap into our local and trusted um, community partners and um, amplify those messages about the education and the information, and then um, you know, advocate for access to vaccines for all of these families. Next slide, please. So we know that uh, many folks are looking for that reliable information. They might be questioning vaccines more than ever, and they might not be going to their doctors to get the information. They're looking to local trusted community resources. And for that reason, we know that um, community resources need reliable information. And that is what we here at March of Dimes as a convener is, is so good at doing over the years, bringing organizations together, um, providing consistent messaging, and um, this is one quote um, from Dr. Marcella Nunez-Smith. It says, the conversation on vaccines has to be hyper-local. People are going to listen to their neighbors. They're going to listen to their church leaders and community leaders. And when asked, they have to have the right information. So that's really what we're here to talk about today is making sure that the right information is in the right hands to reach people. I was telling a story earlier that I was um, driving in the car with a friend of mine and she turned and said to me, um, you know, you work in healthcare and I have an autoimmune disease. Do you think I should get a COVID-19 booster? And, and that is what's happening is people are, are looking to people they trust, looking to people in their community and asking them what they think. And so we want to make sure that um, accurate, reliable information is widely available to answer those types of questions. I'm going to hand it over to Lisa here to talk more about how we'd like to partner with you all to do that. Thanks, Jen. Um, that's absolutely why we've invited you all here today. Um, and I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you for a few minutes. My name is Lisa Holloway, and I'm part of the national team that is working on the vaccine campaign. Um, however, I've spent a lot of time working um, in, in the Ohio market um, and with other folks who are working in the markets. And I truly understand and know the value of voices of our partners and our volunteers. Um, the same survey that Jen referenced before also told us, people told us that they wanted to hear trusted voices um, and opinions from those in their community that they trusted on issues that were important to them. So um, we're really pleased that you gave us your time today um, so we can talk through this a little bit and set the stage for what's to come in 2023. Um, the picture you see here is a picture of um, some of our service partners um, that were doing just that, sharing messages among, their, among themselves and among their communities. Um, and, and they do this so very well. So we're hoping to inspire you all today to wanna be part of this as we move forward um, to do this locally uh, as part of the vaccine campaign in 2023. And so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about um, how we envision this, but I will tell you that we're really interested um, in, in your thoughts too. We know that you probably know best how to reach those in your communities. Um, and so we're gonna be really interested in working, working towards that together. Um, but some of the things we're gonna talk about today and ways that we think this plays out are holding local conversations. So 
immediately you can start to have conversations with the folks that you interact with in your work, um, in your social circles, um, in your churches, you know, wherever it makes sense about the importance of vaccines. Um, perhaps there's an opportunity to hold a special training or an event for those folks, or maybe to embed it in something that you're already doing. And then, of course, social ampl amplification. And, and again, these are just some ideas. We expect that you will have even maybe better ideas or additional ideas as this rolls out. But we're going to go through these a little bit one by one and, and tell you um, what kinds of tools we're going to have available to help um, proceed in this direction. So um, in terms of local events and conversations, we want to be able to provide tools to you um, so that you can learn more about vaccines and, and, and the vaccine gap and the importance of vaccines and messaging, if you will, that will help make um, these conversations a little bit easier. Um, we want to be able to provide these tools on our website. So I'll tell you right now that, that some of these tools are already available. You see our web address down there, marchadimes.org backslash vaccines. If you go there, you're gonna already start to see a lot of information. You will see some social media posts um, and things like that that can already be used. But our commitment going forward is to continuously update this information, provide more information, um, we are hoping you can provide input as to what kinds of tools and resources are needed um, and really be um, supportive on our end to provide what you need to be able to have these conversations, um, whether they're one on one conversations or events or um, you know, other things that you're doing with the people that you interact with. We want to be able to support you. Next slide. And so we recognize that some of that may be may be virtual in today's world. Um, we know that virtually we are able to reach more people. So again, um, we want to make things available uh, that will help you be able to do that so that we can reach as many people as we possibly can. Next slide. Okay, and the social amplification is going to be really important. Um, of course, a lot of this originates at the March of Dimes, and just simply sharing what we share is always an easy way to do that. Um, there may be other ways that you're able to do that through your organization's social channels, um, in, in recognition of some of the weeks that help us elevate this issue, particularly in April, there's National Infant Immunization Week, and August, there's National I Immunization Awareness Week. Um, you know, and there may be others. This messaging might even fit in other campaigns also. Um, we released our report card in November. Um, that may be a good time to combine messaging. If you're working on um, infant mortality messaging or something particular within your community, this would certainly be a message that could be included there. So again, our toolkits will feature tools and resources to be able to do social media, dare I say, easily. Um, um, and have all the information that you will need to be able to do that to make it um, you know, fairly easy. So infographics, data, um, and then resources to be able to refer uh, moms uh, and families to if they, if they want more. Next slide. And so um, I mentioned earlier that I'm part of the national team working on vaccine campaign rollout, but um, I spent a lot of time in Ohio, which makes it really fitting to share this with you today. So Columbus, Ohio has seen a measles outbreak. This, these are news headings just from the past couple of weeks. Um, of course, they started reporting 24 cases. Now it's 46 cases. I just heard the other day that they were at 50 something cases. So this is very concerning and it's been getting a lot of press. But of course, at the March of Dimes, we want to make the tie that this is um, particularly really dangerous for pregnant women. Um, and pointing out that women who contract measles while they're pregnant are really high risk for severe complications. And so we were able to submit a letter of the editor, which was picked up very quickly um, to make this point. Um, this is the kind of thing that we're hoping um, might be of interest to you in your communities, um, you know, to be able to step up and say, yes, as a trusted leader in this community, we need to pay attention to this. This is very serious. And we hope, you know, vaccination is something you'll consider to protect yourself, your children, um, and our community. And then the links are here too, so you can um, go back and take a look if you're interested. 
Okay, so we have your third and our third and final poll question for today. We want to understand a little bit more about how you might be willing to work with us in the future. So our question is, after attending the briefing today, I am ready to share important messages about vaccines, excited to be part of the campaign as work continues, not sure I have enough information yet but I'm interested in continuing to learn more and then uncertain about how I will participate. And I will say you can, you can pick more than one on this poll. Oh, these are wonderful results. Wonderful, this is very encouraging and, and um, we're really excited to um, continue to do this work together with all of you. And um, one thing I did neglect to mention that I do wanna make sure you all hear is that this is the first of two briefings that we are currently planning and possibly even um, more communication like this going forward. We will absolutely be providing information through our website, um, but we do intend to bring this group back together and hopefully broaden this group. So if people miss this call today from your community that you think might be interested, start to think about that because we wanna bring um, others into this as well um, as we roll out the campaign in 2023. Okay. And now is your golden opportunity to ask questions or, you know, and if you don't have a question, but you have a comment, so we're open to comments as well or suggestions. So if you have suggestions of community conversations or things that are in your community that you think, hey, that would be an awesome idea. Start now. Feel free to put it in our chat. And when we talk about two way conversations about vaccines and opportunities, um, what opportunities spring to mind? In, in your minds, you all are in communities, you're trusted, you're experts in your field, um, many of you. So what are your thoughts out of the gate of um, what we could be doing to improve impact? So if you don't have a question, what are your thoughts? So I will say that somebody has asked a question um, while we're waiting around the study that was referenced and we can um, provide some information. Um, there is some basic information on the website already, um, but I think we can probably get that out to the group. We have a fact sheet um, that summarizes it pretty well. So I, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say one of the questions we have is I would like to hear more information about vaccine equity and how this campaign addresses it. And I thought maybe Erin, could, you could talk about some of the advocacy that March Dead Dimes has been doing. So one of the things that we're looking at is looking at exemptions, non, we call them non-medical exemptions as opposed to religious exemptions. So making sure that um, in states there are not policies that create loopholes for parents who are not necessarily um, interested in, in getting their kids vaccinated for reasons that are not medically indicated. So that is one of the issues that we're looking at, but also looking at making sure that parents have full access to healthcare and making sure that vaccines are part of that package. So if you're in a community that might not have a community health center, they might not have um, a doctor that's close, you might not have facilities or a hospital that's close, but do you have access to vaccines through maybe a um, drugstore or a community center? or even home visiting, uh, different aspects and different ways that we can make sure that people who live in communities that don't necessarily have access can get access. So that's just an example of some. I think one of the other things we do really well at March of Dines is our consumer information. Um, we provide information on our website on um, vaccination, immunization, and we also um, have a site that is in Spanish as well. So all of our our information is, is translated um, and it's culturally congruent and we make sure that it's written in a way that's easy to understand. We also regularly update the site. Um, 
And I think one of the reasons um, as a nurse that I came to March of Dimes is we're, we're present in communities and we work with communities, but we also have a national presence. So I think we do a really great job of um, national conversations like this, but also applying that to different communities that we're in. Um, and we have folks that are embedded in projects and programs, looking at health equity and how to best reach people where they're at with what they need. Um, so that is definitely as a convener, one of the things that March of Dimes does really well. Looks like we have a question. Are you planning any campaigns or messaging about maternal vaccines? Absolutely, yes. So we obviously, from the March of Dimes perspective, we want parents and mothers to be healthy. Um, and so we want to, and, and fathers, we don't leave fathers out either. And we want to make sure everybody has access to immunizations and vaccines if they, you know, if they're eligible for them, they have access to them. So yes, we are talking about maternal vaccines, especially because we are concerned with pregnant women, but women in general. Yes, and we just did um, provide some updated information on our website on that particular topic as well. And we are getting great um, messages in the chat from people who are really positive and excited about this. So if you are, um, if you have something you share that you want to share just to us panelists, we would love to hear that too. I love the idea. Um, Bonnie said that in Massachusetts, they're conducting in-person community information vaccination sessions and um, that, you know, they've been able to share that information. So that's the kind of work that we're looking to do more of. Great. Someone else represents a nursing organization that would be like would like to be a part of the campaign. So we're getting some good information here. Any other questions? We do. We have a question around uh, when do you expect the toolkit to be available in 2023? Do we have an expect expectation of when we're going to have the toolkit up and available? Lisa mentioned yes, to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't quite get the mute button quick enough. Um, so there already are a fair amount of resources on there. Um, and I would encourage you all to check, check out what's there currently. But we our commitment is that we will continue to update those and provide additional resources as time goes on. So um, I, we're considering it more of an ongoing um, toolkit, we don't necessarily have a date that we want to have like a finished product because we want to get things out as quickly as we can. So um, it would be wonderful if you checked today and then um, checked on an ongoing basis. And again, we will be having another briefing for all of you and hopefully additional partners as time goes on to be able to highlight some of those more specifically. Lisa, to that point, and you may have said it, but it's worth mentioning again, how do people get access to the information you're talking about? Is Can you direct them to where on our website or where they're finding the toolkits or yes. updated info? Yes. So marchadimes.org backslash vaccines um, is the place to go. And you will all be receiving a message from us following this call today, which will include that address. So you should be able to, to get there pretty quickly and easily. We have a great question here. Does the vaccine campaign include the COVID vaccine? Does anyone want to, I, I guess I can answer that. Yeah. Yes, it does include, you know, we, we do want parents who are eligible or anybody who's an individual who's eligible to get the COVID vaccine. And if they have questions about it, talk to their provider. We can hook them up with the professionals so that they can ask the questions that they need so that they feel confident about taking a safe and effective vaccine. Yes, and I would just add that there is some specific information also around flu um, on our website as well. So it is flu season. Um, people that may be top of mind for folks. And we also did um, a webinar just last Friday, which was really targeted to families who may have questions around flu vaccination and an RSV, and that's readily available as well. So if you are, if that's something of interest, I would direct you again back to our website um, and or our Facebook page. 
So we have a question about stats. Are there recent stats about maternal vaccine uptake? Any new stats since 2020? Um, yes, there are. I don't know them off the top of my head, but we will post them. Uh, there are studies literally coming out constantly. Uh, but I know that there are some more recent, uh, I know there's more recent information about maternal uptake. So we will get that out there. And we have another question. Will you be providing messaging to communities and partners, as well as the approach to ending of the public health emergency? This will affect insurance coverage for those individuals who are receiving Medicaid during this time and the effect of access to care and vaccinations. Excellent question, and yes. In fact, we will make sure it gets on our website. March of Dimes just recently authored a uh, kind of a op-ed fact sheet around what's gonna happen when the public health emergency ends and how families can find uh, services and continue to get services. So we will make sure that that is available also on our website. Will the toolkit be available in different languages? I'm gonna have to yield that one to Lisa. You're on mute, sweet. So sorry. <laughs> that is a wonderful suggestion and one I think we need to consider. Um, I think it would be ideal if we could make it available in additional languages. I, I do think we can always include resources that are linked um, to other sources that might be in, in other languages, but it is a commitment of the March of Dimes to um, translate things into other languages whenever possible. So thank you for reminding us today that that's of importance to this group. And I did just put the link directly to our vaccine page into the chat. So you can go right there and start to check it out. We have another question. How would you like community leaders to engage with the campaign materials? Will you be providing examples or tips on how to use the information? Great question. I would say yes to both of them. Yes, we will provide examples and also learn from you as partners as you start to use these materials, give us the good, the bad, the ugly, or you know, uh, great examples of how it was successful. We would love to be able to highlight that, like personal stories of you using it and how it worked. Yes, and I would just reiterate that our goal is to be able to provide factual information to you and then tips on how to customize the information. Because again, this all comes back to the trusted voice and being able to share information in your own words that is going to that is going to reach the folks that you're talking to. So that will definitely be our goal as part of the toolkit. Well, these have been some great questions. We actually have a little low on the questions at this moment. So I actually did just post um, the survey result fact sheet as well. That was a request earlier. People can um, go to that directly now too. Well, I can say that it's personally exciting to see all the chats, the comments in the chat, the questions, and just knowing that all of you have taken the time today to participate in this call with us because this is really something that's very serious that's happening in our country. And I'm sure all of you are reading the newspaper and seeing the different areas of the country where measles is coming up and polio is even being found in wastewater. Um, it's really important for us now more than ever to get the messages out to families and help them make the best decisions for their families, um, but informed decision um, with good solid science and evidence behind them so that they're not just going on the internet and looking for information that may not lead them in the right direction. We really, it's very, very important that we protect our herd immunity. And March of Dimes is absolutely committed to that um, because we need to protect the families that can't be vaccinated, right? We know that there are families out there who cannot and we need to protect them too. Oh, someone's asking if there's gonna be a data collection component. Ooh, our evaluation team is excited to see that. Yeah. <laughs> So I will just say that one of the things that was referenced on the slides that I covered was that we are gonna be interested in having you report back to us what you are doing. Um, potentially, you know, if you're reaching, you know, numbers of people, what that looks like. I think that your point though is well taken that we need to consider, are there other abilities to um, understand what we're doing and its impact? I don't know that we're talking about a formal evaluation 
component, but anything that we do, we want to make sure that we're driving impact. So we will definitely um, appreciate that comment and, and consider it more thoroughly, but we will absolutely be asking you to report to us um, and then also share with us what additional resources you may need as, as the work unfolds. All right, I think we've answered all the questions. We've, we've gotten some great feedback in the chat. So I think we've, we've gotten our message across and we've got people who are excited. So I hope to see you guys as we crusade through the next year and, and do some of this work and have conversations in our community and seeing you on some of our stakeholders um, and some of our calls in, in the future. We would love to be able to highlight some of the work you're doing um, as best practices and tips um, that are actually being applied in the community. So keep us informed. Let us know how you're doing. We would love to be a part of it and to highlight what you're doing. So thank you for joining us today.